Hey guys, it's Sister Brack. Um, so today I'm here to talk about pushing your details as far as possible. Um, so you can see here uh, that uh, I get past the blocking stage pretty early. I'm blocking along um, just the general like gist of every feature, the characterization. I'm thinking uh, early, way early on. Um, I collected about three different references that I combined together. Um, but I had an idea of how I was going to combine them, and I saw the original picture in my mind. So I really recommend that for you guys, um, to see the image in your mind and find references that patch up what you don't have in there. Um, there's a lot that I did on my own. Uh, for instance, uh, the shape of the eyebrows. I kind of didn't want flat eyebrows like we're in the reference. Um, but uh, I wanted something a little bit more feminine, so I started off straight off with that. Um, if you just go back to when I was blocking, you can see that I really went in straight into the eyes. I didn't want to lose that picture in my mind. Uh, but blocking is continuous throughout. Uh, lots of blocks for large places, but I got past that pretty quickly. Um, and we're already into detailing at this point. And what I wanted to do here is just quench my desire to uh, push rendering as far as possible. And that means uh, you nothing is left behind, no detail is left behind. That's tricky because all of our principles are based off large to small. So you are allowed to detail. You have to graduate into it. You have to be able to uh, create a bed of good blocks. So even here, yes, we're starting to detail, but it's not excessive detail yet. It's not, it's not really excessive um, when it's the right time to do it, basically. Um, so the biggest problem with detailing is is how to manage detail and maintain the focal point. Well, it's very easy. It still goes off the same principle of how you manage detail when you're blocking or have a painterly painting. Um, you you keep all of the, the smallest brush you're ever going to use is only used around the focal point. Everything else is a degree higher. Um, a rate extend, extending radially. So the closer brush strokes get to the focal point, the, the smaller they can get. The further away, the larger they can get. In a portrait, uh, the focal point is the eyes, or the eyes, of course. And what we have to do is just assess how deep uh, detail we're going to go, and then shrink our brush to that level. So when it comes to painting hair, though, which is the biggest comment uh, I get from people uh, for this particular painting, is how I manage to keep the hair detailed, but not out of the way not in the way and just keep it out of the way. Well, there's three ways to detail. There's shrinking your brush, which is what I talked about. There's contrast and providing more contrast than anywhere else in the painting. There's saturation for color, of course. Um, and then there's the edges. The edges have to be super sharp. So when I got into the hair, and you'll see that in a bit, I made sure that the hair stayed as uh, blurry as possible. So the only thing that was left behind of those three methods of detailing was the small brush, and even that had to be passed through a blur tool and a smudge tool on scatter. So I was really just beating the crap out of all of the little brush strokes that I was using for hair. I wanted the texture to be there. I thought, and I've talked about this, the illusion of texture making it seem like there's hair, but it's not really there. So I did start off with blocky, large brush strokes for the hair, and then eventually detailed as I got. Uh, closer to the focal point, but I didn't detail hair with contrast and sharp edges. I only detailed hair with a small brush passed through a smudge and blur tool. Now, that's to deal with how to deal with the hair. Obviously, the hair around the eyebrows is closer to the eyes, and lashes have to be there as well. You can't provide eyebrow detail and not have any lashes. It's impossible. You either, pretty much the eyes tell the story. The eyes are deciding how much detail you do anywhere. If the eyes don't have lashes, nothing gets to have a brush stroke of hair, especially the hair on the head. Um, so you have to start off with that lashes, make sure that you have the lashes there. Uh, then move on into the eyebrows. Um, by, by now you should have already addressed how small a brush you need to go for creases. Um, for water lines, for specular lights around the eyes, uh, but you cannot start uh, brush strokes, small tiny little hair brush strokes around eyebrows or, or hairline without having addressed all the necessary amount of detail max you're going to hit, the detail capacity that you're going to hit in the painting around the eyes, and that means lashes unfortunately. Um, but trust me, the lashes are going to look over rendered, I know, uh, but once you start catching up the rest of the face um, with the lashes, it won't feel so off. Uh, it will feel off if you have eyebrow hairs that are detailed without lashes, though. 
Uh, so for the lashes, I don't just draw every single lash. I'm still thinking about texture illusion. So I kind of I use a small, hard, round, basic brush for lashes. It's it's detailed, and I can still work with it from far away. Um, a brush that has opacity doesn't really let me detail from far away. And when you're detailing, you stay zoomed out. This detailing and pushing detail does not mean that all the fundamental foundations that you've developed thus far get, just get thrown out. Um, you have to remember that you are supposed to stay in the same kind of dashboard attitude that you had when you were painting painterly. You're just pushing the render as far as possible. Uh, so that means that you will have to zoom out. You will have to assess the impact of every single piece of detail that you added. Um, so I, I create the illusion of the texture. I count. I mean, if I have five brush strokes of lashes on the on the eyes, I have five uh, or three or less brush strokes uh, on the eyebrows. Um, so it's you have to make sure there's a step down every single time, and the max cap is determined on the eyes. Um, of course, hair needs more brush strokes for um, hair pieces than uh, a lashes do, so you get away with that. But again, we made sure it wasn't interrupting the focal point by minimalizing edge work and minimalizing contrast and blurring and smudging everything. Now, what is it that we detail? Detail is information. Detail is stuff that we don't really see unless we're artists. Detail is stuff that is absolutely necessary in there but only if you're pushing the detail, but it's not stuff you would have ever thought about if you were doing painterly work or stuff that was mildly rendered. So detail is in the smallest little changes of value on stretches of skin. It is the tiny little illusion of, 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 of highlight just there between the two lips, just the smallest little bit. It is edge work. It is, of course, shrinking your brush where you need to, but you can tell, compare the rendering in the eyes to the mouth very very different but the eyes and the, uh, the lips still have some kind of contrast to them to help them come out but you have to find a way to push everything one step further so the space between the nose and the mouth women have mustaches um, and I started noticing it in photos because women usually bleach their mustaches but it still shows uh, some women don't even bother with that stuff and they just let it grow and it's just this really really subtle beautiful stretch of value and I always thought that area was extremely empty. Whenever I painted it, I felt like it was artificially empty. It felt artificial. Um, and I realized, hey, wait, wait a minute. We have a stretch of hair there, too. Um, and of course, it's not a full drop of a pigmentation. is the way we have it with men. And it's not thick hairs. It's small little peach fuzz. So that's something that definitely added info without me having to shrink my brush at all. Um, so uh, then, then there's the space underneath the eyes. Of course, you know that I really, really like to add um, detail around the eyes, uh, the, the space right under the eyes, the little eye bags. But I didn't want to make her look old. I didn't want to make her look uh, very youthful. And I gave her that very large crooked nose. And I didn't want to add another beauty um, deterrent, I guess. Uh, so what I did was I detailed around the little wrinkles that, around the eyes. So when the eyes open, they kind of uh, wrinkle up like a... Um, like that, that instrument. So when you stretch it, it has less wrinkles, and when you close it, it has more wrinkles. Uh, just like the knuckles, when you open, when you straighten your fingers, you have lots of wrinkles around your knuckles because that's extra skin for mobility. Well, I made sure I had that detail. Um, then I went in into the, before I started detailing the eyebrows, you see, and the eyelashes. So I did all of this before I went into the tiny little hairs. I had to make sure that there was a good bed to accept all this excessive detail coming up, and you'll see it in a second. Um, there's the edge of the nostril, there's the bounce light. I added that way later. Um, I missed it and I found it the next day. Um, then there's the fact that you, as much as you'd like to, and this is all about pushing uh, detail, of course, but you cannot wrinkle the lips. You cannot add details on the lips. The lips, unless the camera was only on the lips, you cannot bring in those wrinkle details on the lips because it, what, it, what, what it will do is completely throw off what you did with the eyes. The eyes are everything about the painting. And I know we're pushing detail, and that means that we are trying to find every possible opportunity to, with, of course, the layer, the over, like that hanging, looming threat of losing your focal point. So it may seem like a good idea to detail everything as much as possible, even with a level of care um, paid to contrast control and detail control and shrinking your brush, like size control, it will still throw off. And I had, of course, that large piece of hair that I was going to add um, that was caught in the wind. 
and I didn't want to do any extra work around the mouth because I knew it would be covering a substantial amount. Um, uh, then there's the uh, uh, just the brush strokes that I'm doing. As you can see, I've started to throw in all those little hair pieces, but as soon as I do that, I realize, okay, I don't have enough detail around the eyes. I'm just going to get started on the eyebrows, and I kind of bring in a little bit more detail, extra little contrast here and there around the nose bridge. Um, and then I started adding detail around the eyebrows. So it was like a back and forth. There's no one single li single linear uh, uh, process to detailing and pushing detail. Pushing detail goes against everything that we've learned and trained so that we can even get to this level of realism. You have to avoid detail to get to realism. And then to get to max realism, you have to reintroduce detail. But of course, with all that moderation. So I add just a little bit of, uh, just one piece of hair, the main active piece of hair flying away. And then I start going back into the eyebrows. I add a little bit on the eyebrows. And then notice that the eyes feel a little bit nude. So I started adding a little bit more uh, lower eyelash um, detail here and there. Um, and then I started kind of pushing the crease a little bit to see if that will hold it. Because I don't like using lashes. I don't like to use lashes. Of course, they are present. They're there. Eventually, I'll have to use them if I'm pushing detail that far. Uh, but I like to see if the crease might have taken care of the detail um, requirement for the focal point. I like to see if a little bit of a suggestion of hair around the eyebrows um, might help. Uh, but uh, but I eventually did introduce lashes in. Uh, but it's definitely uh, uh, how you manage all of this detail without but still maintaining the principles and the fundamentals. So many of my students while watching the stream uh, said, how dare you, how dare you go against everything you teach? How dare you <laughs> uh, try the detail? And detail is possible, but just take a look at the hair right now. It's not in the way. It's not um, a disrupting the focal point. It is not some sort of over-representation of detail. I did not uh, paint the painting, uh, paint the piece of hair with single brush strokes first. I laid down a bed of large brush strokes. Uh, to introduce the value drop in that region, to introduce the mass of the hair, the volume. Um, and only after did I start really shrinking my brush and passing a, a blur and smudge layer on top. Uh, just take a look at how I jump through my tools. Uh, you'll see me on smudge tool, you'll see me on eraser, on all kinds of stuff to manage that amount of detail. I do push the crookedness in her nose that much further. I'm trying to create even more info. So that crookedness in the nose, the tiny little suggestion of a mustache, um, the excessive drop in the content, like the, 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 the hooded eye, that's all detail points you're developing. You're developing like experience points in detail for the painting, for the current painting at hand. Um, you're pushing the painting's uh, info count. I'm not sure if you know what I mean by that, but it's just how much the, inf the painting has. Um, then I added the little mole, and then I thought, okay, that, that might help with the detail, and then I realized, nope, that was that was too much. Um, I wasn't going to, uh, uh, you know, just do anything there. I was just going to let it be and, and uh, just keep going uh, with the hair and see if I can push more before I jumped into lashes. Uh, so I did I did do lashes on the lower eyelids because I thickened and lowered the hood of the upper eyelids. I, I kind of minimized and delayed the lashes because of that. Um, I wanted the hair to feel wet, um, which is why I had to make it so stringy. If it was dry, it would have all been one big clump. But wet hair um, shows its its little pieces of, uh, of you know, it, it thins out and it becomes more stringy. It shows off its little curls and all of that. So I wanted to get, get that feeling across. Then finally, the last thing that I do at the end of all of it is throw in the lashes. Um, and because I was building it up, I was making sure that I had detail everywhere as I needed to before I depended on the lashes. Uh, but I knew the lashes were going to be there. I knew them that they were going to play a role in the detail count and the info in the painting. And um, it's really about making sure that you, you can see it in your mind. It's not uh, detail will help you make sense of the painting. No, detail is something that you decide to do only after you have a really, really well-constructed bed of anatomy and form and all the wonderful fundamentals. So you just keep doing what you're doing. Um, it's not 
and a different way of painting when it comes to detail. It's an added stretch. It's like DLC for your painting. You still have to do stuff the way you normally do. You still have to block in early. There's no, just because you're saying, oh, this one's going to be pushed in detail does not mean that you get to detail early or that you get to take shortcuts or that you get to use a brush stroke that is too thin for hair when you haven't even developed eye creases yet and oh I'll just smudge it later or something like that stuff is going to throw you off that's like throwing a wrench into your engine you cannot try to do that stuff it is only accessible you graduate into it you have to earn it and it requires amount of, of, of instinct so don't try detail until you feel ready for it make sure that you're not uh, 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 misrepresenting of the detail. Make sure that you you because right now where you are in your in, in your skill level, you're not sure what you're doing with your focal point. You're still learning how to respect your focal point. Um, you're still building a relationship with it in your paintings. So I cannot you know give you the green light to detail like this until you've developed that. That means you have to have at least like 50 more blocked. Uh, high fundament, like fundamental heavy grayscale portraits before I invite you to try detailing and pushing that. Uh, with my private students, I try to push it into, I try to introduce them into the idea of detailing, but only when they're done their 14th or 13th day do I start talking about um, shrinking the brush ever so slightly, but I don't invite freckles or pores that often. Um, only when the student is advanced already and uh, the 14 day challenge is like just one way to dress and further them into an advanced uh, skill level. But uh, just keep all that in mind when you're trying to do your, uh, your work. And uh, I hope you guys kind of take something out of these videos. Um, I will see you guys next month. Thank you everyone for your patronage. Thank you for who's exploded. My Patreon exploded. Thank you to everyone who's joined. Thank you for watching these videos. I hope you enjoy them. I will see you guys next month. Bye.